Hello and welcome back to sharing a chapter a day. This is Do, Ra, Me, and today I will be reading chapter 82 of Engagement in Peril by Dara Ado Sok. Chapter 82 is titled Back Home. Once I left the San Clemente border checkpoint, I drove onward, driving through several luxurious cities like San Juan Capistano, Laguna Beach, Mission Viejo, Lake Forest, Irvine, Seal Beach, Signal Hill, and Cherry Pineapple Grove before arriving to my home in Long Beach, California, off the 405 North around 1700 that afternoon. Now, Cherry, Cherry Pineapple Grove was the very city that Shinshin Nagami had grew up in, on those mean streets of that town after he had run away from the children's ranch in San Pedro during his youth we had ran with the local gang then. It was here that he was given the choice of joining the armed services or do time in a state prison then. I'm glad he chose the first option. I was fortunate to have come to meet and know and known Shin Shin then at the basic training at Great Lakes, Illinois. I can say now that he was my savior then at basic. He was my light of the world. I surely miss my beloved. Since I left for the Newport, Rhode Island, since I left for the Newport, Rhode Island months earlier, my mother had moved to a new apartment in Long Beach. Fortunately, I still remember where my older sister and her children live. So once I arrived into Long Beach off the 405 North and Atlantic, I drove to my elder sister's home first before being shown where my mother had moved to. My sister and nieces and nephew were surprised that I was there and just suddenly showed up at their one bedroom apartment without having told them beforehand because I hadn't told a soul that I was returning home on this day. I just showed up and up unexpectedly, like I often do for many life for many of life's occasion. That was just how I was then, and still is to this day. Once my sister saw me after a quick embrace and welcome back statement in our native tongue, she quickly called me up my mother at her workplace several miles down the road to tell the good news of my return home. Shortly after, several minutes later, my mother dropped what she was doing at the sweatshop sewing factory and came over to welcome me home. I embraced my mother and told that I was home for good. We all hugged and embraced and caught up on what I had missed and what had been going on with me while I was away, far away on the other side of the country. While we all talked about this and that, my sister prepared some meal for me and everyone else to enjoy that afternoon. We all ate together that afternoon, feasting on steamed rice, steamed vegetable and fried fish and toasted squid. It was a nice it was a really nice meal. I hadn't had that sort of meal in a long time and it was a good feeling then, being home and enjoying family and family's cooking once again. I had missed my immediate family so much then. I was feeling much better. I wasn't I wasn't as angry or anxious like I was when I was staying in Rhode Island and North Carolina. I was calming down. And then again, I was once again a civilian. After eating and after cleaning up our messes, we all decided that I should live with my sister, her husband, their kids, and my younger brother, Chan Bore, that had a more spacious apartment than my mother's place. My mother had moved to live with my, my sisters months back since high school was only blocks away from her apartment on Linden Avenue. Turned out that my brother ended up going to the same high school that I, that he, that I had went to several years back. He also attended Long Beach Polytechnic High School off of Atlantic Avenue and 15th Street. Besides, I could help them with rent and monthly bills and finances while I stayed with my sister and her kids. So we all agreed to the proposal, and with the help of my brother, nieces, and nephew, we emptied my Civic of all my worldly possession then into my sister's small, cozy one-bedroom apartment off of East New York Street and Linden Avenue. After unpacking my belongings and arranging my sleeping quarters where I was sharing with my brother, I rested for the rest of the day and slept soundly. The first day back in Long Beach, I didn't bother contacting Benevolence or anything she took she too knew nothing of my return then. After, ha av after having a nice long rest, I woke up soundly and prepared myself for the rest of the day. I had already planned to surprise Benevolent and her family on the west side of Long Beach that afternoon. I knew she was at work during that time, so I figured I would run some errands first before showing my face and at her family's home off of Seabright Avenue and Burnett Street. So I decided to call up the California Employment Development De Department to file a claim of unemployment hopeful to get some monetary compensation. Luckily that late morning, I, when I called the EDD, I managed to get through a caseworker pretty quickly. We talked and discussed my last employer and place of employment and of why I was no longer working for the United States Navy. After about a good 20 minutes or so of information exchanges and, and crunching the numbers, I was notified that I would be receiving unemployment compensation for up to one year. 
I was to receive a check every two weeks or so, and I was also told that I need to keep looking for work while I receive compensation from the state and that I should inform them when I do find work during the time of getting state unemployment compensation. After talking to the unemployment department, I organ organized the rest of my belong and got paperwork and things in order. Around 18 that afternoon, around 1800 that afternoon, I finally drove myself to Benevolent's home to surprise her of my return. In jeans and a blue polo shirt, I arrived up to Benevolent's family home and surprised them all with my sudden present. I knocked on the front door and her brother Jason opened the door and was and was surprised to see me there. He welcomed me in his cozy home and told me that his sister was in the backyard doing some early spring cleaning with his mom, with, with his mom and siblings. We exchanged a quick boyish embrace and I headed toward the backyard to find Benevolence, her sister, Anna, and her mother there mowing the lawn, pulling the weeds, and trimming the flowers and plants. Once I saw them, I gave a good shout, Hey! 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 I'm back! Once they heard my loud call, they all looked toward my direction to find me with my arms wide open in greeting gesture. They all dropped what they were doing and quickly came to where I was. One at a time, we hugged and embraced each other warmly. But never as I hugged and kissed for several long minutes. I had missed her so much then. I had, to I told her that I had missed her and I that I love her then. Once we were done with the hugs and kisses, we all returned inside to their kitchen table and talk of where I had been and what I had been up to and how did I come to be in this their home in the first place all of a sudden. While sipping on some cold caffeinated soda and munching on some baked goods, I told them of my stories and adventures in and at the Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, going back several months since I saw them last, leaving out the good, outrageous, and unexplicit sex stuff with Amanda, Julie, and Ashley, of course. I just didn't want Benevolent to know of my indiscretion and promiscuous adventures that happened only weeks ago. I had cheated and I had made animistic love with strangers and girlfriends that I had found during my harsh, complicated time there in the East Coast. I just couldn't find the words or how to go about telling benevolence of my impurity then. I just didn't want to scare, freak her out, or lose her then. I just didn't want to tell her the truth. After all, I was starting anew all the same. That's why I was coming home in the first place. I was ready to start things off on the right foot with benevolence at that moment. So I had secretly told myself then in my head why I was fascinating everyone with my stories, adventures, and endeavors. Go ahead and tell yourself that, Dara. Go ahead and tell yourself that, Dara. You're just lying to yourself, you selfish son of a bitch. Did you even think that perhaps I never may have forgiven you if you told her then? After all, she too was unfaithful to you, you know, remember? Or do you even remember what happened between her and her that asshole Scott and that special education teacher whom she worked with? What the fuck? And remember what she did behind your back while you two took time apart. She well, went out and got knocked up by someone else, you idiot. As I reminded myself of what had happened in my past. I spent the rest of the evening with Benevolence and her family. Once all her siblings had returned home, we all had a nice festive dinner together that night, enjoying ourselves with flavorful chicken, adobo, stew, and steamed rice, and some cabbage soup during our meals together. We all laughed during our eats together, and after we finished cleaning up, Benevolence and I hung around the living room watching local, the local news and various comedic televised show that evening. In warm embrace, she and I held each other soundly, sneaking small kisses and hugs throughout the night. Around 2200 that evening, I left Benevolence's side and returned to my sister's apartment. Benevolence had work the next day, and we promised to see each other again after she got off work. We both kissed and hugged goodnight, and I drove off toward my sister's home off of Atlantic. I left Benevolence home from Santa Fe South, hook a left on Pacific Coast Highway, and then took a right on Atlantic Avenue, and then a quick right on East New York Street, and then a quick left on Linden Avenue, and I was home. I locked my car's door, set the alarm, and walked myself up the creaky wooden step to my sister's apartment. I knocked on the door. She opened the door. I told her where I had been and what I did with Benevolence's family. And then I washed up and went to bed that night for a good long rest. Once again, before I fall asleep, I prayed for Shin Shin and thoughts of Ashley once again. I was still stuck on that amazing, amazing, amazing girl from Sunburst, Montana. Thank you for listening. This is the end of chapter 82. Be on the lookout for chapter 83. Titled, Mediocre Jobs and College Life Begins. This is Do, Ra, Me, and I'll see you later. Thank you.